From Piccolo to Pickle Rick, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Luke Field. Hi, this is a real treat for me. <laughs> and next to him, Eli Uden. I'm sitting next to Luke Field. And next to him, Joan Ford. Hi, the one thing I won't correct you on is watching this show because that's the right decision. Hey, yeah. you've made the right, the right decision, decision by being here today. Yeah. Uh, Luke, Joan, you've been on the show before. You've won your previous episodes before. Mm. Eli, you've watched many episodes of this. Yeah, um, that's true. Because right. you work at College Humor, but you're normally on the, in, in New York. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually far away from the cameras uh, yeah. on purpose. And now we've dragged you in front of four. Well, the rules here are very simple. These are a stack of incorrect statements about the things that you know and love. It's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with what I've just said, buzz in and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually, and you can interrupt me at any point in the statement. It's just that easy, or so it seems, <laughs> until the questions start coming. Let's go ahead and jump in then. We'll get to our first statement here, which is about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Excluding the master, who was turned into a vampire by the demon lord Arceus, each of these vampires were sired by a single other vampire. The master sired Darla, who in turn sired Angel, who sired Drusilla, who later sired Spike. Uh, Eli. Um, actually, the master wasn't sired by the demon lord Arceus, because Arceus is a Pokemon. Uh, Arceus is a Pokemon, but he's also a demon lord. Hopefully crossover. Does it connect? <laughs> yeah, it's the same character. Yeah. Uh, so no, that's incorrect. I'm um, actually, basically what he said, but the demon lord but is better. not- But the demon lord's not a vampire, so he can't sire vampires. We explicitly sort of call out that he's kind of the exception here. Yeah, um, I know, but, but uh, come so, on. You know, yeah. <laughs> come on, stop you. it. Yeah. I'm yeah. grasping at straws yeah. here. Come on. I'm hoping Luke ends every answer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Joe. Um, actually, the master is, is like, technically not a vampire. He's, like, a head vampire, which maybe has a different term <laughs> that I don't know that I'm gonna, that I'm making up right now. No, I okay. like, I like the guess. Everyone's, everyone's really, really centered around the, the master, but no, yeah. that's, that's not what's going on not, here. Okay. The real point of contention here is that I said all these si vampires were sired by a single other one, but Darla wasn't sired by a single vampire because she was turned human at one point and then re-sired by Drusilla. Whoa. So, uh, Darla... Sired Drusilla sort of down the line or indirectly, but then Drusilla went around and sired Darla. So it's like a like a loop. It's like a, it's a little sire bit like a loop. loop. Yeah. It's like she's like the fry the fry vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But you know, it's a lot like the original vampire, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. If Luke you haven't back. heard the good news, yeah. Luke will tell you about that later. Yeah. Well, no points for that one, unfortunately, but we'll move on to our next question, which is about Magic the Gathering. Okay, I'll put my buzzer down. <laughs> <laughs> In Magic the Gathering, there are a set of very rare and powerful cards from the Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited sets known as the Power Nine. Four of them are Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus, Time Twister, and Time Walk. The other five are known as Moxin and are Mox Pearl, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ebony, Mox Ruby, and Mox Emerald. Um... <laughs> You're the picture of confidence. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's a panic attack here. I'm um, actually... Mox Jet. It's not Mox Ebony. That's correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yes, Mox Ebony is a kind of wood. Yeah. Uh, uh, the rest are all gemstones. Uh, mm. Jet. Yeah. Jet would be. Jet, of course, being a plane. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, there's the gemstones, and, and then the one is a plane. <laughs> it's just the, yeah. <laughs> the mox jet is just like, it's like, yeah, we're going to get to the other side of uh, fucking Dominaria. Yeah. Dominaria? Is that right? Yeah, sure. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end of the fourth book in the Hitchhiker's Guide series, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, Marvin the Paranoid Android finally experiences a moment of happiness when he has revealed to him the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Luke. Um, actually, he does experience that happiness, but it's not because he gets that answer. It's like for some other reason. I don't know why. Um, that's correct. Do you, do you, can you guess why, what the other reason is? He um, eats a really good donut. <laughs> I don't really know. No, he finds a message from God uh, that says, we apologize for the inconvenience. Mm, um, yeah. Which, honestly, would cheer me up, too. Yeah. I think yeah. so, too, yeah. Hey, God, yeah. he's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's right. If you haven't heard the yeah. good news. Thank you for giving me this platform to preach. <laughs> yeah. I like that you have this very, like, evangelical thing, yeah. but Jesus is a vampire is central in it. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. 
like well, I look, love the good word also. The Bible sucker. can be interpreted in many different ways. Except and... for one. In all of them interpretations, Jesus is a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want a pamphlet from Luke, uh, just uh, tweet into the show. We'll, we'll be sure to get those to you and uh, we'll, we'll get this, uh, this following off the ground. Yes. Um, for now, we'll move on to our uh, our fan questions. So this is a question that came to us from a fan uh, uh, submitted to the show. This comes to us from Die Schadenfreude. Uh, mm. And it is about Death Note. A Death Note is a notebook that can be used to kill people simply by writing their name down in it. But there are a lot of rules, more than 50 of them. <laughs> Among these rules, if you misspell a person's name four times, they become immune to the Death Note's powers. If you don't write a cause of death, the victim will die of a heart attack. And the user of a Death Note cannot get into heaven or hell. Eli. Um, actually, the thing about writing someone's name four times is not real. It is real, but there is something wrong. But it's with, wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> I meant to say it is somewhat right, but also <laughs> there is an incorrect detail. We'll give this to Eli yeah. for, for at least yeah. identifying it first. And this is extremely pedantic, but it has to be four times uh, misspelled accidentally. Uh, so you can't use it to sort of be like, I'm going to make myself immune by like spelling my oh, own name spelling wrong. spelling my own name it, wrong. But it's more of just like, if you're such a fucking klutz mm. idiot that you can't <laughs> figure out how to spell the name of the person you're trying to kill, yeah. and you keep trying yeah. and keep fucking, eventually it's like, you know what? You had your chance, you didn't do it. Yeah. God, all gone, done from the list. I want to see someone get the death note with just awful penmanship. Yeah. It's just like all this. <laughs> Why <laughs> that it's demon like, is like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Did you yeah. say Jagern yeah. Goblorbin? What is this? Yeah. It's like, that's John. That's John? Yeah. It looks yeah. like Jagern. Yeah. <laughs> it really breaks the, you know, like yeah. the, the, the gravitas of the whole thing. When yeah. It's like, I will do your bidding. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. This is a, do you know how to do a Z in cursive? Yes, yeah. a cursive Z. <laughs> we are going to play a game called Tag Out. Uh, so on the other side of this board, there are a number of movies uh, that we have removed the taglines from and placed them on the side. So to you to match the correct tagline with the correct movie. In this case, these are all M. Night Shyamalan movies. So let's flip that over, take a look at those. Um, look at those taglines. Don't they entice you to want to go see a spine-tingling, oh, twisty boy. tale <laughs> from the twist master himself? Bryce Dallas Howard is the lady in the water. I'm learning. I feel like these could just all be taglines for the happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you may have noticed that uh, a lot of these have the word, have the word happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. These are awful. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make you want to see the movie? This feels like one where like, once you think you got one locked in, you pick up another one, it's like, well, no, hold on a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like being given a, a board with uh, square holes and then six square pegs. <laughs> it's like, well, this all works, actually. Are you implying that these movies have uh, certain commonalities <laughs> to them, Eli? OK. All right. Yeah. Jo Joan, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm locked Joan in. Is, Joan is locked in. I, it's not going to get any better than this. I'm yeah. done. But that's coincidentally what he said when he finished drafting Lady right. in the Water. <laughs> 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 we'll go down the line. Quickly run us down. This is what I got. Six cents. Not every gift is a blessing. I put un It's Happening under Unbreakable only because I wanted to put it under here, but if it was The Happening, It's Happening, I would kill myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> signs, we've sensed it. We've seen the signs. Now it's happening. Also could be that. Uh, are you ready for the truth for the village? Lady in the water, time is running out for happy ending. Okay. And run, the truce is ending. The truce being the truce with the trees. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, Spoiler so, alert for happening. Eli, why don't you run us down your selection here for tag lines. Sure thing. Well, they're all right. That's the first thing you need okay. to know. For the sixth sense, I also put not every gift is a blessing. Okay. Unbreakable, uh, time is running out for a happy ending. That was just sort of left when I'd done the ones that I thought I might know, and it doesn't seem to apply to me. Signs, it's happening. Then uh, the village, are you ready for the truth? That one I felt like I know, because that's the thing is that they're, you know, like in like New Jersey or wherever at the end. So we're spoiling <laughs> all of these. Yeah. The real twist about the village is that the truth sucks. It's really stupid. Uh, Lady in the water, I said, run, the truce is ending. This I feel I know is wrong. But I do enjoy the, the plot I've created with it, <laughs> which is that there is a truce with the lady in the water. That, and the truce is that she stays in the water. Yeah. She's breaking that truce. She's coming <laughs> out. I don't remember Lady in the Water, but I feel like I appealed. Paul Giamatti is in it? Paul Giamatti's in it. Does the Lady in the Water live in a pool in his like, hotel? Indeed, she does. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. And but, but would you believe that the hero of the tale is, a, is a, an unappreciated writer? Played by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, cool. That seems like he wrote that by a pool and did very little work. Uh, so anyway, she's coming out of the pool. That's right. a big problem. Paul Giamatti's like, stay in the pool. And he's like, no. <laughs> and he's, he's running. The happening. We've sensed it. We've seen it. The signs. Now it's happening. I think this is like maybe I'm, Night Shyamalan thinks it's funny to reference everything he's done so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it really just reminds people of all the bad movies he already made. And that, uh, thank you for the time. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> uh, Joe, right. let's see what you got. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, starting with not every gift is a blessing. Okay. We all agree that his power to see dead people is not a blessing. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, are you ready for the truth? I feel like this was like we're hot off the tail of the sixth sense. So we so we're gonna like remember M Night Shyamalan gives you those twisty endings. Uh -huh. Are you ready for the truth? <laughs> then it's happening. I do remember this poster. Run the truce is ending. I remember there being like a truce in that movie between like. Uh, the village, pe the village people, the band, the village, <laughs> the village people. people yeah. Yeah. And, uh, this movie's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. weird. Uh, but I remember there being a truth between the people in the village and like the monsters outside the village who were also the people in the village. Mm. That's, a, that's another twist I'm, I'm ruining for you. Time is running out for happy ending. This, story, this is a fairy tale, so like happy ending, why not? I feel like this was less M. Night Shyamalan thinking all these references were funny and more like the marketing team being like, remember you remember these movies you like remember about you used from to like M. Night Shyamalan? This guy? <laughs> yeah, forget these two. Remember these two? <laughs> like, come yeah. see this one. Yeah. yeah. Luke, you got uh, two of these correct. Whoa. Eli, you got three of these correct. And Joan, you got all of them Yay! correct. Uh, so right. that point will go to Joan. Yeah. Fraser and Shalaman. Well, let's do a, a real quick rundown here. But yes, you're right. Not every blessing is a gift. Are you ready for the truth for Unbreakable? It's happening for signs. Run the truce is ending. Time's running out for happy ending. And then we've sensed it. We've seen the signs. And now it's happening. God, I feel like such a fucking idiot that yeah. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, I, I almost moved it because it was like, they truly can't. And yeah. It did. I also like how much fun we're making of M. Night Shyamalan, and then we have all seen every movie he's yeah. made. Yeah. Well, this like, fucking idiot. I watched this one, and I gave him my money for this one. I bought the DVD for this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I've I'm seen like, this one three times. I've it's seen, really bad. I saw all these movies in theaters. Like, yeah. a lot of them on opening day. Well, we made a couple of mistakes, and you caught them. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you. At Bishop says, um, actually, Josh Hartnett didn't stab Jon Stewart with a needle. It was a hollowed out pen, which is what his character hid his drugs in so he could sell them at school. That is a point if we imagine that it is Josh Hartnett and not the character he played stabbing people. And coming from the exclusive dropout Discord, Hollow Avarice says, Zarathos isn't a demon, but an angel of justice sent to Earth by God, who was captured by hell and treated like a demon. Aren't all demons really just fallen angels, though? No, everyone screams at me. One point for you. Humble Egotist says, Um, actually, Jacob and his pack aren't werewolves. Actual werewolves in the Twilight series are called the Children of the Moon. This is correct, and in fact, you can find this in a future question in an upcoming episode of Um, Actually. This question is about Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman takes place in Hollywood, or Hollywoo, as it is called for most of the series, and thus features a lot of celebrity cameos. Celebrities often play themselves on the show, and these guests have included Daniel Radcliffe, Andrew Garfield, Paul McCartney, Margot Martindale, Naomi Watts, Ira Glass, and Lance Bass, who appeared as a fish version of himself. Eli. Um, actually, Andrew Garfield, there's something with it that was weird. So it wasn't just him straight up. Uh, that is correct, but I don't like yes. your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't lay bare the... <laughs> uh, don't, believe... don't admit your ignorance so, so casually. It was something to do with either Spider-Man or he voiced the cat Garfield on the show. Uh, no, it's it's not that. Um, but I'll, I'll give you the point unless someone can... Unless someone uh, can... Um, actually, I was also going to make a Garfield joke. Oh. And say he just played it himself, but as an orange cat that loved lasagna. In the show, it is it is revealed that Andrew Garfield has a lot of similarities to Garfield. Mm -hmm. uh, he just uh, hates Mondays and loves lasagna and stuff. But that is he's not a cat. He is just Andrew Garfield, who himself happens to have these particular idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Eli, I, I, against my best wishes, I'm going to give you this point. Mm -hmm. um, That's uh, why I'm here. To make him mad. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Garfield does appear as a character, but uh, he's not voiced by Andrew Garfield uh, himself. He's voiced by Paul F. Tompkins. Wow. Um, uh, all the other characters are, are voiced by themselves. Uh, and in fact, sometimes if people refuse to voice um, uh, to voice someone, they 
uh, the, the creators will sometimes, you know, rewrite a little bit to maybe, I don't know, make your character a lot like Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew Garfield, by, uh, by the end of that storyline, ended up uh, falling into a hole and breaking all the bones in his body. Um, so there's, there's that. Well, would you look at that? It's ass o'clock here in I'm Actually Land, which means I'm going to tell you how to keep your butt clean with Hello Tushy. The brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment is a stylish, eco-friendly, refreshing little shower for your ass just in time for summer. Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, and that's not all. It also cleans itself with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. That's right, cleans your butt, cleans itself. That's a lot of cleaning. The Hello Tushy bidet attachment attaches to your existing toilet, so there's no electricity, no extra plumbing, and it will cut toilet paper usage by 80%, so it practically pays for itself. It's like you're shitting money. And sure, you could shit money by like swallowing a bunch of quarters, but that's painful. Don't eat quarters. Shit money the easy way with Hello Tushy. Plus, Hello Tushy's got your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Already have a Hello Tushy on the pot? Well, maybe treat your ass to the new 3.0 model. And if you're brand new to the Tushy revolution, we'll enjoy millions of happy customers right now and enjoy a clean butt with every flush. Defeat swamp ass. Go to hellotushy.com slash actually and you'll get 10% off your order plus free shipping. This is a special offer just for um actually viewers. That's 10% off plus free shipping just by going to hellotushy.com slash actually. One more time, hellotushy.com slash actually. Now, back to the show! In the show Lost, the Dharma Initiative, which stands for Department of Heuristics and Research on Material Applications, maintained a presence on the island in part by setting up a number of research stations, including the Hydra, the Pearl, the Swan, the Lighthouse, and the Looking Glass. You all remember Lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the light, the looking glass wasn't one of the stations. It was like something else. The looking glass was a station. It was a station? Yes. Right. Um, actually, the lighthouse wasn't, the, it wasn't, a, uh, res wasn't a research station. It was like a, um, I want to say it was like an observation. It was like a, 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 like, it was like a beacon. I, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't the lighthouse. Lighthouse wasn't a research station. Um, that is close enough. The lighthouse was not a Dharma, uh, <gasps> a Dharma initiative established research station. Um, the lighthouse uh, was an ancient stone tower uh, <laughs> that uh, you, um, it was used Before, by yeah. Jacob to determine who would succeed him as guardian of the island. Oh, uh, it yeah. predates the Dharma initiative. Oh. Jacob. Uh, I just had a flood of memories from that show, and yeah. also with that, a flood of emotions of disappointment <laughs> and hatred. Because I forgot all about Jacob, and I'm like, oh, goddamn. You gotta love a good creature companion. In Samurai Champloo, there's Fu's flying squirrel Icarus. In the 2003 Astro Boy series, Yuki Kisaragi has a robotic ostrich named Chobi, and in Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang hangs out with a flying lemur named Momo. Yeah, Luke. I'm actually Astro Boy Fly Solo. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have any animals it's just yet because he's just a boy. A he doesn't know wolf. how to take care of one yet. Uh, no, that's incorrect. All right. Mm. Uh, Joe. Um, actually, is it right to call it's like Astro Boy's companion, like a robot? So technically, it's not a creature. Not a creature. <laughs> <laughs> this Can has no feel? soul. Yeah, I refuse to acknowledge that this is a creature. A dog has a soul. A crab has a soul. This thing, no. <laughs> no, this is a God, this is an affront yeah. to God. Yeah. Just like Astro Boy himself. Yeah. Um, uh, no, that's that's incorrect. Um, actually, the flying squirrel in uh, Samurai Shampoo is not his companion. In fact, it is his greatest foe. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> A lot uh, of good ideas, um, though. <laughs> the flying squirrel in Samurai Shampoo, the robotic ostrich in Astro Boy, and uh, the flying lemur in uh, Avatar The Last Airbender are all named Momo. Uh, uh, all three of them are named Momo. Whoa. So if you had corrected the name on either of the other two, it would have given you the point. Right. Um, um, but yeah, uh, just a bunch of little adorable creatures named Momo. In case you wanted it, uh, Icarus is the name of the flying squirrel in Little Nemo, and Chobi is the name uh, of a chocobo in, um, in which one is it? Uh, one of the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and Momo means peach in Japanese. Mm. Um, Oh. Uh, but also, Princess Peach is not Princess Momo in, uh, in Japan. Life's crazy sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's just nuts. If someone's life was going out of control and they needed something to stabilize it, do you have any like religion or anything that might uh, help? Yes. Uh, 
still. <laughs> I don't want to go down this path. <laughs> I don't like this bit anymore. Yeah. It was fun for a little bit, but now I'm starting to like dredge up a lot of repressed Catholic memories <laughs> that I am starting to get into. That uh, I don't want to. All right. Well, no points for that one. Um, but this will bring us to our second shiny question. This is a game that we're calling Needs More Pixels. Uh, uh, a game that Blue totally crushed last time he played. Pretty damn good at this game the one time I played it. <laughs> but let's see if we can stump him this time. Uh, so the way this game will work is we've taken an iconic image uh, from uh, film or TV, and uh, then we have applied about five layers of pixelation to it. We're going to show the most pixelated version of it. Each of you will only get one chance to buzz in and guess what it is. Now, you can either pass, and we'll show you a slightly clearer, less pixelated version, um, uh, which will make it a little bit easier, but will also make it easier on your opponents. Or, uh, or you can take your guess when it's more pixelated. Sound pretty clear? Yeah. All right, so one guess. Sounds pretty pixelated to me. Hey. hey. <laughs> Let's show that image. What are we looking at here? I feel like taking my glasses off is yeah. like cheating. It's like somehow clearer. Yeah. If you all want to pass, if you all want to move on to the next level of clarity, we can do that. I'm going to pass. All right. I'm also willing to pass. Very good. Do you want to guess or do you want to no, pass? No, I'm, I'm passing. All right, let's, Sorry, let's, go, to the, let's go to the next level of clarity here. Slightly more pixels. Any guesses here? This is the Sega Genesis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something with a lot of brown in it. <laughs> Guesses or I'm passes? Gonna pass you. You're gonna pass. I'll pass too. I'll, I'll pass. All right, let's kick it up to the next level of clarity. Luke. Um, actually, this is Gremlins. This is not Gremlins. Oh, damn it! Eli. Um, actually, this is the creature from Pan's Labyrinth with eyes in his pants. <gasps> yes. That is correct. Yes. 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 This yes. is the Damn. Hail Man yeah. from Pan's Labyrinth. Can we pixelate that back a little bit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not, we're going to leave this on the screen for the rest of the game. As a, <laughs> you got to give it to me, though. That looks... What does that look like? It's essentially a gremlin. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's essentially has ears and the what eyes. Version There's of the no gremlin. ears. <laughs> it's, it's markedly really no ears. ears. In a pixelated version, that's basically a gremlin. That point will go to Eli for being able to identify a very pixelated Pale Man from Pan's mm. Labyrinth. Hey, did we say something wrong and it's pissing you right the hell off? You don't have to just sit there screaming at your screen. You can correct me. Tweet at um actually show or go to our exclusive Dropout Discord and tell me what I got wrong. If we like it, we might feature it in a future episode. In N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth series, origines are people with the ability to sense, quell, and control tectonic activity. Non-origines, or stills, lack this ability because they lack sesapinae, small organs at the base of the brain. Luke. I have no idea about any of the things you just said. <laughs> but I'm actually, I'm gonna guess that there's actually one still who can do it. <laughs> uh, incorrect. All right. Good genre yeah, guess. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's probably something like that. I feel like this is the base of so many nerd things where if it's a thing you like, you're so into it, and then you hear yeah. something you don't care about, and you're like, like, this is the dumbest. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're just rattling off shit. Um, actually, uh, I've already forgotten every word you say. <laughs> <laughs> it is straight in one ear, not the other. Uh, that is, you're just a really good guess. I wish I could do that one also. Wrong. It was wrong. Could, Don't guess no, that. It felt it. good, though. I could see him enjoying it. I'm actually the, the first type of person that you said. The origins. Yes. Um, they can't control tectonic activity. They are deeply affected by it, and it is, uh, it, it, it ruins them. I mean, that's true of normal people. Yeah. Normal people are ruined yeah. by yeah. tectonic activity. Welcome to California. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is this? That is incorrect. Um, actually, the people who can't control it, are they can't do it because they're just not like trying hard enough. They're, <laughs> they're, 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 they need to apply themselves better to tectonic and energies. Uh, I'm gonna throw one more uh, just general side of yeah. yeah. Everyone has that um, thing in their brain, but the origins, um, actually, yeah. everyone has that thing in their brain, but the origins, theirs is like activated and, and, it, and they have like better, um, 
they're more in touch with it. Luke, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's essentially what yes. I said. That's basically I, well, what never I give said. Up. Don't ever give up. Jesus is real. Back <laughs> on the Jesus train. Here's why it's, it is subtly different, because uh, it isn't a matter of effort. Uh, uh, stills also have sesapine, but they're less developed. It's mm. not just that like you have to try harder for it. Uh, th those organs exist in, in stills, oh. um, but they're, they're bigger oh, and more man. developed and just like... So there, think, there are physical mom. differences yeah. still, but I it's think they could like... be trying harder. I am <laughs> judging them. Apply yourself yeah. still. Anytime a sci-fi book yeah. starts to get into like underdeveloped genetics, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna step away from yeah. this book yeah. before I find out something terrible. Here's the here's the interesting thing about this series is that it is sort of like an inversion on a lot of those things because they are the oppressed people in the series. They're sort of like they're kind of feared for their power and they're kept under like mm. a very strong thumb uh, and just sort of like systemic oppression. Mm. Yeah. And this is a physical large thumb. This is a large yes. thumb that mm -hmm. comes down from this guy. Yeah, fantastic. Our next question is about video games. In Final Fantasy X, Yuna is a summoner, a religious leader with the ability to summon powerful spirits called eons. She spends most of the game on a journey to perform a ritual called the Final Summoning, which she believes will help bring peace to the world. In Final Fantasy X-2, however, Yuna is no longer on this journey and has become a pop star who uses her summoning powers as part of her act. Final Fantasy, literally anything could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, the names of the, the spirits that she's trying to conjure are not called eons. Uh, they are. Okay. Yeah. All right, fine. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You win some, you lose some. They made Final Fantasy 2? 10 2? 10 2. Not yeah. 11? Not 11, 10 2. Uh, cool. 11 yeah. comes before 10 2. Does that clarify things? Yeah, are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, she's not a religious leader. She's feared for her power. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big thumb on her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's got these sassanines in her head. <laughs> Incorrect. No, no. In, in Final Fantasy X, she is a religious leader. Um, actually, we should be calling it Final Fantasy X and not Final Fantasy X. <laughs> yes. That's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. It's very what a Jason world. Yeah. yeah, yes. You yeah. always have to just say the Roman numerals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is not correct. I'm going to go ahead and call it yeah. here. Okay. Um, so in Final Fantasy X-2, Yuna can no longer summon the Eons. Uh, instead, her powers uh, and the powers of the other two playable characters are built around a garment grid or dress sphere system in which they gain powers based on what clothes they are wearing. Mm. Mm. Doesn't everyone gain powers yeah. based on what clothes <laughs> yeah. they're wearing? Um, all right, well, we are going to move on to our last shiny question of the game. And for this, we're going to need those boards again. We are going to play a game called I Require Sustenance. So on the other side of this board, there are uh, uh, a collection of uh, characters, and uh, they're hungry. We want you to feed them. Uh, there's, and you'll also find little spoons uh, that, that uh, labeled with the kind of food they like to eat. I would like you to please arrange the spoons so that you can yummily feed, oh, uh, feed uh, <laughs> these guys with the food of their choice. Uh, go ahead and flip it over. Let's take a look at that. Yum, 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 yum. Here comes the airplane. Uh, uh, let's get this airplane into the mouth it belongs in. I like that I'm putting the spoons directly on the yeah. mouth as if I'm going to lose points if I'm inaccurate. I would, I would appreciate it if everyone could oh, yeah. please put it on their mouths. I'm locked in. Luke yeah. is locked in. Spoon in mouth. I'm, I, I got, wait, one spoon is not close enough to mouth. Now I'm locked in. Great. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll just make some guesses. Uh, mm, I'll lock in. Let's locked do it. Let's do it. Fantastic. All right, same as before, we'll go down the line. I'll reveal all the answers at the end. Uh, why don't you give us what you got here? All right, here we go. Top Hat Jones. No idea who he is. But he's got a <laughs> strawberry on his hat, so I said strawberry smiggles. <laughs> uh, Lyft. No idea who she is. Oh, wait, no, I know what this is. You yeah. can't change it. This is from um, Stormlight Archive. And I'm going to say, it's, I think it's, um, I'm going to stick with Amigli and Major Cal, I think. I'm going to stick with that one. Okay. Uh, Spike Spiegel, no idea who he is. Bubbly Pies. I think this is Arthur and Four from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And I've said pancake, the pancake one. Uh, Master Harper Robinson, I, I don't know. I'm really upset. I think these might be different. Ganymede, Rock Lobster, Kate Austin from Lost, Apollo Bars. Uh, Eli, why don't you tell us what you got? Sure. 
I also had, I think, the biggest nerd moment of this show yet, which is when uh, Luke said he didn't know who Spike Spiegel was. I and you ga- made you a noise. Scoffed. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it, it bubbled <laughs> out of you uncontrollably. He's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> uh, Top Hat Jones, this reeks of like a, it's like a riff on Lucky Charms, probably in Rick and Morty. And then everything in Rick and Morty is like Iggles and Wiggles and Smiggles. So like, that's what it is. And then he probably like murders a child. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I had no idea. Uh, this, of course, is the woman from Space The Starlight Storm. Archive. Yes. I think. <laughs> and I also said a Megalian Major Cow, which I feel better about because that was just purely a guess. Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. I'm torn because I feel like he might like pancakes. I don't remember him eating. Those weren't the parts of the show I focused on. But I said Ganymede Rock Lobster. That just sounds very Cowboy Bebop to me, mm-hmm. where it's just sort of like kind of spacey, but then also... Like, real, I don't know, it's like, lobster's fancy, what if it was space lobster? And that's Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Arthur and Ford, ten types of special pancakes. They look like they like pancakes, why not? Master Harper Robinson. <laughs> that's Bubbly Pies, because that is some fancy nonsense bullshit, like his name. <laughs> and, of course, somebody who's named Master Harper is eating Bubbly Pies. And then Apollo Bar's Kate Austin, that looks like the only thing that exists in any sort of real human world. Uh, Joan, let's see what you got. All right, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Top Hat Jones, stra- uh, Strawberry Swiggles, too. I uh, just, uh, yes, from Rick and Morty, but I think the one thing uh, was that was incorrect about that was that he gets murdered by children. He does not murder children. Mm-hmm. They eat the Strawberry Swiggles out of his intestines. I don't know why. I guess this thing I don't know at all ha- a- a- eats the Amiglian major cow. Okay. Well, we all made that a guess, so <laughs> yeah. well, I right. don't know. It okay. just seems like... I feel like... better now. Um, Spike Spiegel, I didn't know who he was either, so I'm going to say, so I said 10 types, especially pancakes, because, like, I'm just imagining, like, that the pancakes in this animation style would look delicious. Arthur and Ford, I said uh, the rock lobster, Mm. because that feels like a dish they might serve at the restaurant at the end of the universe. This guy uh, looks like he eats bubbly pies, so (laughs) I gave him bubbly pies. And, of course, Kate Austin, Apollo bars, that one of the delicious foods that you can find all over the J.J. Abrams verse, along with slushos, and and, uh, that's the only other one one I remember. Yeah. (laughs) Great. Uh, well, looking at this, it looks like, uh, Luke, you had two correct. Uh, Joan, you have three correct. And Eli, you have four correct. Nice. Um, so let's take a look at those actual answers here. Uh, Strawberry Smiggles, yes, this was a Rick and Morty. Uh, Lift it is from Stormlight Archives. Yeah. Uh, and the ten types of special pancakes uh, were Lift vows to eat all ten types uh, during the holiday. Yeah. Uh, during holiday. Because you know? because she eats food to power her pa- her like Stormlight powers, of course. Now, and I remember that, and I feel like a fucking idiot. Like Spiegel, yeah, the Ganymede Rock Lobster. Eli, you were you were correct on that one. Uh, it's from Cowboy Bebop. Arthur and Ford, this is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but they are the ones who eat the uh, the Amiglian major cow. Mm. Um, it's at the restaurant at the end of the universe, but it's like, a, like I think the cow is like, it talks to them? I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember yeah. now. Yeah. Like, I think it's sort of like, it is like choosing a lobster at a restaurant. It's like, you uh-huh. can choose the cow. The cow will come talk to you, tell yeah. you like about all its delicious cuts and things. Master Harper Robinson, uh, this is from Dragon Riders of Pern, and indeed, he does eat bubbly pies. Uh, with a name like Master Harper Robinson, yeah. it's yeah. gotta be bubbly yeah. pies. Yeah. Uh, and and Kate Austin, yes, of course, uh, Paula Bars um, from Lost and, and Across, and J.J. Abrams. Well, this brings us to our last question of the game. The last question, as always, concerns real-life skills, so not anything to do with any of the stuff we've been talking about, just perhaps a valuable life skill. You know you need a smoke detector in your home, ideally with both ionic and photoelectric sensors, but it's also recommended that you use a radon detecting kit in your home every two to five years. Radon is a radioactive gas and one of the leading causes of lung cancer, second only to cigarette smoke. Although elevated radon levels over four picocuries per liter are found in about one out of every 100 households, if you do have elevated radon levels, you can lower the level by fixing structural and ventilation issues in your home. Uh, Oh, boy. I would I can survive hear you long. thinking. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hum- light humming next yeah. to me. That's a- what I'm learning is that, because uh, the last one I had was about lightning, is that I would die very quickly <laughs> in most situations. <laughs> um, um, actually, uh, radon isn't the second most common source of lung cancer in the United States. Incorrect. Hmm. 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 Learning every day. Yeah, it's dangerous, that radon. Um, actually, structural stuff has nothing to do with radon. It can, uh, w- weirdly enough. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, actually, radon isn't radioactive. It's just bad for you. <laughs> uh, no, no. I'll, I'll go ahead and call it yeah, here. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the correction we were looking for is that we claimed that elevated radon levels are found in about one in every 100 households. It's actually found in about one in every 15 households. Uh, so it is extremely common. And, uh, and all those other things are true. It is a, uh, a extremely common cause of lung cancer and other things. So get your home tested for radon. Our final score here is 342. 342 still, which makes Eli well our I winner for this episode. I uh, emerged with honor and tech. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good job. <laughs> thank you so much for playing with us, and thank you for joining us. Come back next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Goodbye. Goodbye. And now we just play banjo Bye. music as we all wave.